Well, friends, today we are given the absolutely gorgeous text of the disciples encountering Jesus on the road to Emmaus. And there is just so much about this text that deserves our attention and contemplation. But it's just a daily Mass homily, so don't worry. I want to focus on one element of this story, and to do that I want to share just a little bit, kind of a little personal witness and testimony of some words that were spoken to me at one point in my life at a very critical moment that had it not been said to me, I probably would have never gone to this seminary and I wouldn't be here today. So take you back in time, I was a freshman in college, my freshman year of college was spent at the University of Dayton. So graduated Hudson High School and junior, senior year is when I was really beginning to think about seminary and discernment and priesthood and all of that terrified me. I just thought it's just going to be a life of misery and loneliness and I don't want that. So I thought, you know, I can make myself happy on my own terms. Never works. I thought I could make myself happy on my own terms and I went to the University of Dayton, had a great scholarship, but I was uh, quite miserable there. Not for, you know, any immoral reasons, but for the sheer fact of I was given by God the opportunity to have all the things that I thought I should have to be happy, and I still wasn't happy. And I just convinced myself over and over again, no, 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 it's not that you didn't go to the seminary. No, 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 you just picked the wrong Catholic college. All of these mind games I was playing with myself. Well, it was around March of that freshman year I came back to uh, help out with my home parish's spring retreat. It was Saturday evening, and they had the Blessed Sacrament exposed in the room, and the teens were praying, and I had this little candle set next to a chair next to me, and, you know, saying, I'm someone you can pray with. All the while, I feel like, I feel dead inside. I feel a hundred miles from God. I feel like I, I am encased in ice, and I, I have no connection to the Lord. And I remember sitting there, and I just said to the Lord at some point, I feel so far from you, and I'm just done. I'm done with this. I'm done running. And I heard the Lord say deep in my heart that night, how about we try this my way, and don't be afraid. And crying, 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 you know, so much snot. All the orifices of my face are leaking. And I walk over to a friend of mine, and I just start sharing with him what I'm experiencing. And this friend of mine, who was in the seminary at the time, he says to me, he, go, he's, he says, you remember the story of the disciples on the road to Emmaus? I said, sure. He said, well, had, did you ever notice that Jesus was willing to walk farther in the wrong direction than they were? Like that, that comment right there. Just, it, I can't even put it into words, but that changed everything. So you got these disciples these disciples of Jesus who are dejected, downcast, heartbroken, confused. They've just decided to wash their hands of the whole thing. We had hope that he had been the one. We're hearing these things that maybe he's been risen from the dead. I, I just can't put myself in this place anymore. I'm just done. And they're walking away. They're, wa they're walking to this town called Emmaus that's away from Jerusalem which, objectively speaking, is the wrong direction. Everything in Luke's Gospel is ordered towards Jer Jerusalem. The whole momentum of the Gospel flows to Jerusalem. Everything is headed to Jerusalem. And Jesus even says to the, the, to the disciples before his passion, death, and resurrection, remain in Jerusalem. And where are they going? Emmaus. They're going in the wrong direction. And notice what the risen Lord doesn't do. He doesn't stop them as they're leaving Jerusalem. He doesn't stop them at the gate of the city and say, what did I tell you? I told you to stay. Nor does he wait for them at the city gate, the city limits of Emmaus, tapping his toe and just looking with disappointment, like, what are you guys doing here? That's not what he does, right? No, he accompanies them. He comes up right next to them in the midst of their journey, walking in the wrong direction. He's unknown, he's hidden. But he's there, and what does he do? He begins to engage their hearts. And he's patient, and he's probing their hearts with questions, right? Are you the only one in Jerusalem who doesn't know the things that have happened in these days? And he says, what sort of things? Tell me. Talk to me. And then the text says this. As they approached the village to which they were going, he gave the impression that he was going on farther like, where are you going, Jesus? Where are you going? But they urged him, 
stay with us, for it is nearly evening and the day is almost over. So he went and in to stay with them. Again, the whole point right here this morning is he was willing to walk farther in the wrong direction than they were. He was willing to bring light farther into the darkness than they were willing to go. And so this is what I want to say in particular to you this morning, parents and especially grandparents. Because I hear it all the time, whether it's in conversation or confession or just counseling folks, that the pain that so many of you parents experience because your kids have left the church, deep pain that you had them baptized, all the sacraments, you sent them, many of you sent them to Catholic schools and you went to church on Sundays, most Sundays if you could, right? You did the best you could, and yet somewhere along the line, whether it was in middle school, high school, college, the culture just gobbled them up. You were completely blindsided. And then there was just one day where they said, I don't believe this anymore. They lost their faith. They left. And then they got married to people who weren't Catholic, and they got married outside of the church, and they started having kids and your grandkids who are unbaptized. And you watch that happen, them being raised with no faith whatsoever. And I know, I, I know this, the pain that you carry in this. I hear it and I see it. And so does the Lord. Like, the Lord hears it, the Lord sees it. You know, I hear it all the time. Things like, uh, you know, of our five kids, Father, two are faithful and three just aren't. And there's seemingly no explanation for why that's the case. And I, if this is you in any way... Like, this gospel is for you. This is the, this story, these disciples on the road to Emmaus are the patron saint of those walking in the wrong direction. Like, if you are heartbroken because people you love are walking in the wrong direction, I want to beg you this morning to take heart and be filled with hope. Why? Because Jesus is willing to walk with people who are walking in the wrong direction. And he's willing to walk farther than them in the wrong direction. Like, he will not abandon us. He will not abandon them. I challenge you to read Psalm 139 this morning through the lens of this gospel and through the lens of your children or grandchildren or whoever who've left the faith who are walking the wrong direction. We can't hide from him. They can't hide from him. They can't run faster than him. There's no darkness into which they can run that he's not already gone, that he doesn't already illuminate. Oftentimes when he walks with us, just like in this, just in this gospel, it's hidden and unrecognized. Like they, your kids, your grandkids, your friends, they don't recognize him in their midst, but he's there. He is there. He's the good shepherd and he's active and he's endlessly creative, always creative in thinking of ways to try and break into their life. Because here's the best news. For all of us in this situation this morning, that he wants their conversion more than you do. He wants their hearts more than you do. He loves them more than you do. He wants peace and healing and reconciliation in their hearts and in their relationships and in between you and them and your family more than you do. He wants this more than you. He does. And he wants them in heaven more than you do. And there's nowhere they can hide from him. There's no place they can go. He's with them. So, this gospel's for you. Take heart, because the risen Lord does not abandon those who run into the darkness, those who walk away, those who walk in the wrong direction. He didn't do it then, on the morning of the resurrection, and he's not ceased to do it now. He's still with them. So take heart.